I wanted or needed something new. And when I walked in today and you gave that first, the whole first opening, I felt my answer had it been- It was for you. It, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I absolutely knew it. So I got my answer. I know now, and what I was asking you right now, when I was asking you to come up here, I want to know how to apply it more specifically in my life. You know that I'm knee deep in life, and I'm trying to find a balance, still do the things I need to do, and apply just enough daydreaming. It's all right. And how could it not be this way to a certain extent? knee deep in life meaning responding to life reacting to life life coming at you reacting 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 well of course you're reacting because it's coming at you and of course you're reacting of course you're reacting it's normal that you would but today's discussion is about yes react because you can't not you can't not but also do something else which is get out ahead of it occasionally and let yourself just free flow with your ideas about what you want do both don't just react because by just reacting you continue to want and not allow and want and not allow and want and not allow and want and not allow but when you hear what you've heard today and really understand what you've heard today and then you put a little bit of emphasis on what we are calling getting out ahead of it and by getting out ahead of it we mean don't wait for it to come and then react get out ahead of it so do things that you feel fairly certain are uplifting in nature spend a little bit more time in the shower and bask a little bit more take a walk if it feels good to you have lunch where you really want to eat in other words do things that put you in a position of easy appreciation and from appreciation now those aligned thoughts that are in your vortex will flow easily into your experience we're gonna have a really good conversation here you're really gonna like this so this conversation is about we're speaking from your point of view where I stand in relationship to everything I want that's what this conversation is about where I stand in relationship to manifestations like cars in garages and lovers in bed and where I stand in relationship to emotions that feel good like joy and eagerness and excitement ease is interesting because ease indicates pressure that you want to release just like when someone says freedom it indicates bondage that someone wants to get away from so even the word ease is a little reactionary you see what we're getting at so this must feel very complicated because I am where I am and how do I get to a better place well by moving more in the direction of what you do want and less in the direction of what you don't want so how do I feel better by thinking more thoughts from the vantage point that my inner being thinks them and thinking fewer thoughts from a place of separation from my inner being I stand here as a vibrational offer that's what you could all say about yourself all the time and my vibration is a mix of stuff it's about things that I believe and things that I observe it's a vibration that I continue to offer it has a direction it has a momentum it varies how can I do a more productive effective good feeling job of contouring my vibration first by acknowledging that I do vibrate second by acknowledging that I offer a vibration because of my thoughts third by acknowledging since I vibrate and offer my vibration because of my thoughts I can direct my thoughts next by acknowledging that I can choose better feeling thoughts or worse feeling thoughts and the more I choose better feeling thoughts the more the momentum goes that way so it really is about just thought by thought deciding which direction I want to be more dominant you're following so 
We talk to youth over time by encouraging you to choose better feeling thoughts. In other words, revenge feels way better than depression. And anger feels way better than fear. And blame feels a little better than guilt. These are subtle changes in your vibration that if you were on top of it, and if you understood the principle of resistance and releasing resistance, then it would be easy for you thought by thought to just choose better feeling things. But if life is coming at you and you are reacting to life, then your life feels out of control and you get knee deep in a dominance of unwanted things. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So how do you get out ahead of it? Well, maybe something can break the cycle. Maybe someone could swoop into your life with such clarity and passion that you could observe them for a while and you might feel a little better as you develop dependency upon them, which isn't a good idea. <laughs> or maybe you can get a little more rest and take it a little easier, which would give you a little more physical stamina and a little greater resolve to reach for better feeling thoughts. You could meditate every day, which would quiet your mind and actually stop all of that resistant vibration, which would give you an opportunity to get out ahead of it. Just something to sort of break the cycle. Now we're going to demonstrate something that works but it's doing it the hard way. And then we'll talk about something that works that is doing it the easy way. And maybe the hard way seems like the right way to you. We think the easy way is a better choice, but that's just us. We're resistance free. <laughs> so Esther is in a new house and she has a new washer and dryer. And the week that she moved in, which was right before Christmas, the washing machine gave her an air code and it locked the door and she couldn't get anything out of it. So she Googled what the air code meant and it looked really complicated. So she called the people that she had purchased it from and they put her on a long list of waiting. Her clothes were going to be held captive for about six or seven days, it appeared. <laughs> so she just monkeyed around with it and somehow the door opened and she got her clothes out and then it sort of like fixed itself for a while. It's like it didn't lock up again. And she thought, well, it's going to hold my clothes captive again because she knew she hadn't solved the problem, but she wasn't there that much. So it didn't matter so much. And then the other day she was away and her housekeeper called and said the washing machine had given an air code and the clothes were being held captive. So Esther said, I'll be home in a couple of days and we'll figure it out. So the man from the builder came over and played with it and couldn't figure it out. And then he called the same people that Esther had called before who put her on the waiting list of nine days of clothes held capture. And as Esther is listening, she can feel herself all tightening up because they bought a lot of appliances from these people and they shouldn't be holding their clothes captive and somebody should care more about these clothes being held captive and it should go to a higher priority and don't they know who Esther is someone who is really really busy who doesn't have time for her clothes to be held captive and so Esther got herself worked into quite a little silent fit she didn't want to misbehave in front of her contractor but she sort of wanted to kill somebody <laughs> and he was the only one in the room and he felt fear <laughs> and so Esther said well I have a plan B and he said what is it and she said I'm going to go to Home Depot and he said okay and she said I'm going to buy a crowbar <laughs> he gets a smile on his face and he says okay and I'm going to pry the door open and get my clothes out and now he's really smiling because he believes her <laughs> and then I'm gonna call someone and say can you please come and get this pile of metal 
and haul it to the dump and then I'm going to call somebody else and say will you bring that shiny bright new washing machine over and deliver it and she said and I'm gonna do all of that today <laughs> and now they're laughing because it's a ridiculous story but it was shiny and bright it felt like freedom it felt like the bondage had lifted in other words it was a ridiculous plan but it was a plan and she no longer felt bound and held captive by people who don't care and now she's really laughing and so is her contractor and now they're laughing which pile is she in and then she looked at her washing machine it's a Maytag and she said oh, you know what the Maytag repairman is just waiting for someone to call because he has nothing to do and the contractor laughed and said that's right so Esther googled Maytag repairman and he was just sitting there with nothing to do he said I'll be right there he came over he said this is a known issue that we have with this particular model he fixed it her clothes were not held captive and she lived happily ever after <laughs> so what's that about now Esther's unique in that Esther does not want to be mad even when she knows she's perfectly justified in being mad and so she was guided even though it was not easy to a stream of thoughts that led her to an idea that she couldn't find before she could not find that idea before until she got into a place of comedy isn't that a really logical idea she couldn't find it her contractor couldn't find it nobody could find that idea until they brought levity to it so this is a demonstration of no longer wrestling into the ground and killing it and trying to fix what's broken instead getting it into a place into a clear place where you're laughing where the ideas always are fun is where the ideas are laughter is where the ideas are love is where the ideas are appreciation is where the ideas are the cooperative components are in the good feeling emotion places you see but when you're working so hard that you don't allow yourself to feel the momentum of feeling good for Esther she mostly feels good unless something happens she feels great as long as life is perfect <laughs> but then she is like you she reacts she reacts to what's happening and what you want to do is start noticing your reactions and see what they get you notice when your reaction is one of anger and see where it gets you notice how long you can hold yourself in a holding pattern of no help so that it just feels harder and harder and harder until you get yourself in such a muddle that you can hardly even go out your door and get down the street because things feel too complicated for you or notice how with levity and fun all things feel possible this is the conversation that we want to have here today all things are possible but you have to get into the all things are possible pile and the all things are possible pile is right there for you to choose from it's just that you can't jump from one pile to the other but knowing that both piles exist and knowing which pile your inner beings in and being willing to separate yourself through meditation you see Esther's inner being because she can see that cone of light no matter what so to speak she was able to let us lead her into the idea of the crowbar <laughs> it's a great idea <laughs> it's just a great idea she would have been able to get her clothes out the washing machine would not have ever been the same again and it would have required a truck to haul it away which was the next logical step and so forth but your inner being can lead you from wherever you are out into the light or you might already be standing out in the field in the light you see what we're getting at there's nothing serious going on and nothing to worry about and you're not deep in anything except potential and possibility and ideas 